Here are the nine things I wish I knew when I started programming. Lesson number one, there's more to life than big tech. A lot of people want to work at big tech companies and don't get me wrong, landing a job at one of those companies is definitely something to celebrate, but don't make it your life goal. I'm going to let my friend Lemmy explain why you shouldn't do this in the simplest way possible. A Google job is statistically the hardest job in the world to get. It's statistically easier to get accepted into Harvard than it is to work for Google. We actually get um, 2.5 million job applications globally in a single year. You think Google wants you? Obviously, Google's not going to want your college dropout, no work history, dumbass. <laughs> Thanks, Lemmy. You guys should watch his videos too, by the way. I hope you guys understand now. Anyways, while it has its perks, especially in terms of pay, the food, and benefits, the food, but if you're learning programming because you love it, you love the art of creation, the thrill of solving problems, then big tech might not be for you. Since big tech is, you know, big, you'll find yourself working on very specific parts of a large system. Maybe you'll learn how to architect large systems, but if you're looking to leave an impact, that might not happen there. Big tech is also not sunshine and rainbows. Some companies have been known for the terrible work-life balance, where it's not uncommon that an employee will quit within the year. However, smaller companies and startups offer a playground of opportunities. If you're not just a cog in the machine, you'll often find yourself in different roles from planning, designing, and implementation, and you'll go through all the steps in the development process. The work might also be more engaging, fulfilling, and come on, it's probably going to be more fun. But at the same time, do not let these companies take advantage of you. Before you get obsessed over working at a big tech company, or you're discouraged that you never got hired or you got rejected from them, I want you to take a moment to reflect on why you even got into programming in the first place. If it's about growth and hands-on experience, smaller companies might be more suited for you. If you want to relax and just work your 9 to 5, you might want to check out non-tech companies like banks, government jobs, and healthcare. Anything that's not related to tech. And if you're in it for the big bucks, then um, fair enough. I guess this tip doesn't really apply to you. So uh, go for it. Lesson number two, fundamentals are your best friend. Imagine building a skyscraper, right? No matter how impressive the design, if the foundation is weak, the entire structure is at risk. The same principle applies to programming. The latest frameworks, languages, and the tools, they're just upper layers. At the base, the core remains consistent, the fundamentals. Whether you're crafting an intricate front-end design, architecting a robust back-end, or playing around with machine learning, the fundamentals are what's going to guide you. Variables, loops, data structures, algorithms, these are all the building blocks of every coding project. Maybe today's frameworks might be replaced by another in a few years, but you know what's going to remain consistent at the end of the day? The fundamentals. By solidifying your grasp on them, you're not just learning for today, but you're also going to future-proof your skills, which will always make you hireable. So before you chase the latest trends of libraries and frameworks, I want you to take a step back and invest some time in understanding the basics. Lesson number three, the importance of real-world experience. Back when I was in college, I remember working on coding assessments where everything was neatly laid out for us. The problem statement was clear, the structure was predefined, and there was expected answers we were meant to reach, and it really did feel satisfying to solve them. It was like fitting pieces into a half-finished jigsaw puzzle, but here's the reality. The professional world is not like that at all. Once you step into the professional world of programming, there's no professor giving you a structured assignment or any predefined correct answers. While you may have a manager to help you, you're often going to be presented with a vague problem and you're expected to find a solution. So instead of a pre-made jigsaw, it's kind of like a bunch of puzzle pieces from different sets and it's your job to figure out a way to make them fit together. While you may learn a lot from textbooks, online courses, assignments, real world experience is going to be your best teacher. You'll encounter an expected bugs, systems that don't behave as they should, and clients who are going to pivot their requirements overnight. You're going to have to adapt, innovate, and improvise. And it's the unpredictability that builds resilience and genuine problem-solving skills. So for those of you still in college, or those that just graduated, and they're wondering how to bridge the gap between college assignments and the real world, here's my advice. Start small. Dive into open source projects, take up freelancing, and really find any type of internship, big or small. Any hands-on experience is a step closer to understanding the real world of programming. Lesson number four, network as much as you can. When I first started programming, I was focused on skills. You know, master this language, learn this framework, master this algorithm. But as time went on, I realized something. While skills can open doors, it's the connections that light up the path. Think of the tech industry like a graph. Every node represents a person and every connection a relationship. These relationships aren't just about job referrals or project collaborations. They're also a collection of shared knowledge, experience, and insights. A casual coffee chat with a senior developer could offer you a solution to a coding problem that's been bugging you for weeks. A conversation at a tech conference might introduce you to a job opportunity you didn't know about, or a mentor could help steer your career in a direction you didn't think about. But I want you to keep this 
this in mind. Building these connections doesn't mean cold messaging professionals on LinkedIn or handing out business cards like candy. It's about genuine relationships. Don't be weird. It's pretty simple. Just be a normal human being and just talk to them like a friend. Join some hackathons, build some fun projects, make some friends. Engage, listen, share, and most importantly, be genuine in your interactions. Don't be a robot. Don't be fake. Don't act like this is something business. Just be friendly. So for those of you still in college or early in their careers and you're wondering if networking really is that important, here's my perspective. While technical skills are a good asset, combine that with a strong network and you'll turn into an unstoppable force that can get hired anywhere. You have to remember, opportunities don't just come from what you know, but also from who you know. Lesson number five. Imposter syndrome will happen to most of you. During college, I was surrounded by classmates who seemed like they had everything figured out. They talked about technical topics, they seemed confident in their coding abilities, and they asked questions that I didn't even know what they were talking about. And they always appeared to be miles ahead of me. It felt really easy to feel overshadowed, you know, underqualified, and I always wondered if I missed some class that just turned you into a programming prodigy. And that feeling didn't just disappear during my internships either. My coworkers were very skilled while I was just trying to keep up with the most basic things. I always had some doubts, like, do I really belong here? Is programming for me, or I'm just not good enough? Imposter syndrome eats you away. It's fueled by doubt. It convinces you that you've lucked into your position rather than earning it. And trust me, even the most accomplished, smart programmers have felt this way at least once. Here's my advice. It's important that you recognize and acknowledge imposter syndrome as soon as you can. You have to understand that you're not alone with these doubts. It's a struggle that everyone faces. It's okay to not know everything. Share your feelings with someone close or other programmers, and you'll realize that many of them have walked in your shoes. You just have to remember that your path is uniquely yours. Every challenge, every problem you solve, every project is a testament to your growth and potential. Lesson number six, learn how to collaborate and work as a team. In my experience, an aspect that a lot of programmers don't learn early on is collaboration. Collaboration is as important as any programming language or framework. During group projects, and especially in my internships, the importance of collaboration became evident. It wasn't just about my code. It was about how my code integrated with others, how I communicated my ideas, and how I navigated feedback and suggestions. And there's certain tools that you have to master as well, like version control, which ensures smooth collaboration. But more than just tools, it was the soft skills. The ability to listen, to communicate effectively, and to work as one cohesive unit, that's what truly mattered. In the professional world, you're rarely ever alone. You're always gonna be part of a team. Whether you're just developing a small feature or architecting a large system, you're gonna be collaborating. And this collaboration isn't just with other developers. You're gonna be collaborating with designers, managers, stakeholders, and sometimes even the users. So it's essential to understand your technical expertise will open doors, but your ability to collaborate will define the impact you make within those doors. So invest some time mastering tools like Git, but more importantly, nurture your soft skills. Engage in group projects, participate in some team activities, and always be open to some feedback. Lesson number seven, specialization versus generalization. When I first started learning programming, in my mind, there were so many things about programming you could get started with. Web development, machine learning, game development, mobile development, there's a lot to choose from. There's a lot of languages, lots of frameworks and technologies where you're faced with a problem. Where do I start? Here's my advice. Start by being a generalist. In the beginning, learn some programming fundamentals, then explore some areas of programming. Learn some front end, some back end, maybe some mobile development and get into game development if you love video games. I really think this is important. You'll discover what you really love. Once you find that niche, the area of programming that you love, start specializing. Dive deep, become an expert, because the reality is, while generalists can adapt and bring a broad perspective, it's the specialists who become invaluable in their domain. Their depth of knowledge and expertise makes them irreplaceable. Well, until AI steals their knowledge. So start broad, let curiosity guide you, and once you find your passion, go deep and commit to it. Lesson number eight, you'll always be a student. A lot of people early on believe that one day they'll become a master at programming, but that's just not possible in this field. The tech world is always evolving. There's always a new version of a language, some new technology, you know, a new JavaScript framework every five seconds. Things in the tech world just keep shifting and expanding. It's something that's both beautiful but challenging. So if you ever thought of mastering something, here's my advice. Just enjoy the journey. 
Enjoy the journey, not the destination. Enjoy that this is a field where you'll always get the opportunity to learn, to grow, and evolve. You'll always be a student who gets to experience a fresh challenge and learn something new. While you may never feel like a master in the traditional sense, as long as you commit to lifelong learning, you'll become a master of adaptability, resilience, and evolution. And in the world of tech, these are the traits that truly define a master. And one of the best ways to truly learn and understand programming is using project-based learning. In college, you'll spend countless hours on theoretical concepts, algorithms, data structures, and while it did lay a solid foundation, it was only when I started implementing them in projects that's when it really clicked in and I learned them. You see, there's a big gap between understanding a concept and applying the concept. I remember my first programming project, you know, the classic to-do app. Once you know the fundamentals, it's pretty easy to plan and design it, but when you implement it, that's when you're truly gonna learn. The process of turning an idea into a functional application was so exciting. It wasn't just about writing code, it was about problem solving, debugging, user experience, and just the satisfaction of seeing my creation come to life. Projects have a way of presenting challenges that textbook exercises just can't. They push you to integrate various concepts, to think critically, and often to venture outside your comfort zone. Whether it's a personal website, a mobile app, or a game, each project is a unique puzzle waiting to be solved. So dive into these projects. They don't have to be grand or revolutionary. It doesn't have to change the world. Start small, build a calculator, make a to-do list, automate something. And with each project, you'll not only reinforce your knowledge, but also gain practical insights that pure theory often misses. In the world of tech, projects serve as evidence of your skills. They're your portfolio, showcasing your abilities to potential employers, collaborators, and the world. But more than that, projects are a testament to your journey, each one a milestone marking your growth, your challenges, and your triumphs. I'll leave some resources to get you started with project-based learning and hopefully improve your technical skill sets. And I hope my lessons will help you become a better programmer and get you closer to your dream and not end up like me. Yeah, you should check out my Netflix video if you want to truly understand what I mean by that.